All right, welcome to another episode of Guitar Fundamentals on Stitch Method. Before we begin, just make sure you do uh, click that subscribe button and that bell notification so you don't miss any further videos, and share this with someone who you think will enjoy it. With that being said, we're going to get right down to it. We're going to talk about seventh chords. And when we're talking about seventh chord, there is a hefty smearing and dosing of music theory that comes, comes with it. Excuse me. And I'm going to try and keep it light as possible and yet as understandable as possible. So we're going to try and keep it like at the medium salsa range, not the hot or extra hot salsa, but we're going to get a lot out of this. So, you know, uh, stick with me. We'll get through it. So I'm going to take a sip of coffee out of my awesome NASA mug. Give me one second. I need to wake up. And we're going to do this. Let's start. All right, so seventh chords. We've all heard them. We all understand that they're out there. We've seen them in all of our chord charts, and some questions might be out there. I teach a lot of people. And, uh, ooh, it's thundering. Yes, I love thunderstorms, so I'm going to be in a very good mood for this. Sorry if the thunder... Um, you know, rattles the microphone a little bit, but we're going to deal with it. Okay, so I teach a lot, and a lot of people ask, okay, you know, what's the deal with seventh chords? Why is there a major seventh chord, a minor seventh chord, a dominant seventh chord, a minor seven flat five, or a diminished seventh chord? And I have to answer this stuff, and, and I know it, but the idea is I want to try and keep it as simple as possible. So we're going to really kind of find this little plain sneak in. So let's begin. All right, you have to understand the concept of a chord first. What is a chord? Well, a chord, a basic chord, is known as a triad. And that triad, this is the most amount of music theory you're going to learn right now. That triad consists of a root note and then taking uh, its, its major third or minor third. You're going to skip over, you have your major scale, right? And you have a root note and you're going to skip over the two and go to the three. And so you have a one and you have a three. You leaped over the, the even number. And then you're going to leap over the next even number, the four, and go to the five. And now we have a one, three, and five. And those are the components of a chord. Now, you can do it with a minor scale, and you have a, a one and a minor third and a five, and that's how you get a minor chord. Totally cool so far, but all you need to know is that major minor chords are known as triads, and triads refer to the one, the three, and the five that are built out of a scale and they come together to create a chord. Now those chords are the simplest chords that we can pretty much find. And they're all you need to really write a lot of songs. And as you know, you look up tabs and chords, you'll see D chords and E chords and C and A minor. Those are all regular triads, just three note chords. But then all of a sudden, someplace along the music theory line, somebody said, hey, what if we add another note in that series? And somebody said, well, what do you mean? And the guy said, well, you know, we're building notes on one, three, and five. That's every odd number. What if we do one, three, five, seven? And somebody was like, why would we do that? And all of a sudden, seventh chords were born. Uh, that's not a, a, a non-fictional story. I totally made it up. Okay, so the idea is a seventh chord, when you hear seventh chord, you want to think to yourself, this is a four-note chord. It has a one, has a three, has a five, and now, pardon me, has a seven. Okay? Take that out of there. Um, and so when you have anything added on, to your major minor triad or chord. It's known as an extension. So seventh chords are known as chord extensions. And so if you ever hear that term, just realize that a chord extension is a triad and we're throwing more on top of it, okay? And unfortunately for us, there's all these different types of seventh chords, but we'll pause here. How are you doing so far? And if your head is spinning, don't worry. The only facts you need to know is that a major or minor chord right now consists of three notes known as the one, three, and five. And we're adding one more note in this odd number order, one, three, five, seven. And that's known as a seventh chord. And a seventh chord is a four note chord. That's all you need to know, okay? Everything else out of my mouth was absolutely pure fluff. That's what you need to know. Now, we're gonna you know, start really starting to hit the gas. And we really wanna try and see like, why do we play these seventh chords? Where can you put them? And some really cool rules that you can kind of break and help uh, write some songs. And so, Let's take the key of G. We're going to start with the key of G. It's got the easiest open chord set. I don't know where all of you are that are watching. I might have some beginners, some intermediate, some advanced who want to brush up on their theory. Some people can play really cool bar chords everywhere and some who are just comfortable with open chords, but it can all be done right here with open chords. Don't you worry. And as this makes sense, curiosity will start to kick in and I believe in you and you'll be able to start doing things all over the guitar neck. But the key of G, let's look at the basic major and minor chords in the key of G. You have G, you have A minor, you have B minor, C major, D, E minor, and you do have F sharp seven minor, uh, yeah, F sharp seven minor flat five. And this chord right here, 
I'm going to link a video right up here and below that talks all about diminished chords. So I'm not going to talk about this chord today because this video that I just pointed to is going to answer all your questions. So right now we're going to deal again with the, the chords G, A minor, B minor, or B minor, like this if you want to keep it easy, C, D, E minor, all right? Six out of seven chords, a seven chord again, will be explained in that video, crystal clear. All right, and so in the key of G, those are my basic triads. Now, let's give every single one of these chords a number. The G is one, the A minor is the second chord, two. The B minor, like this, or like this, is the three. The C is the four, the D is the five, and the E is the six. Very simple, that's actually how they're numbered. I'm not making that up. And now, it's like, okay, well, take a look at this. I'm gonna put this up here, and we're gonna talk about something very quickly, and then we'll kind of back up. The first chord, any key, can be played as a major chord, or it can be played, excuse me, if I can play the chord right, as a major seven. Okay, here's a G major seven. We could talk about that. The second chord can be played as a minor, or a minor seventh. The third chord can be played as a minor, or a minor seventh. All right. The four chord can be played as a major, or a major seventh. I'm going to show you all these guys really quickly, don't worry. This, uh, the five chord can be played as a major or a dominant seventh. And right there, now we have all of our ingredients. I've already said major seventh, minor seventh, and dominant seventh. We're going to get to our sixth chord, which is the sixth chord can be played as a minor or a minor seventh. And then the seventh chord, again, will be talked about completely in the video link below. So, how are we doing so far? You're probably like, what did you just say? And don't worry, don't worry, we'll go over that. All right, so let's start with our one chord, the G. The G is our first chord, and if you, ex if you extend the chord out to a major, uh, sorry, to a seventh chord, the way the rules work, and again, we don't have to get into this, we're trying to keep this at the medium salsa spi uh, um, spiciness here, is every one chord in any key can be played as a major seventh chord. And in this case, the major seventh chord, and I hate the fingering of this, <laughs> is, is this guy here. I always go to play it wrong. All right, and I'll, I'll put a graphic up here, but what we're doing here is we're adding, you have the one, the three, the five, and now you have the major seven. In this case, it's our F sharp. All right, so you have, you have a G major seven like this. It's a pain in the butt to play. Cheap and dirty version, strum from the D string. So the one chord can be played as a major seventh. We're gonna talk about why, when, and where, all the fun stuff, I wanna go through it. The second chord is an A minor. Now, fun fact, the second chord is, is a minor chord, the third chord is a minor chord, and the sixth chord of any key is a minor chord, and those always can be played as minor seventh chords. Okay, so any A minor seven. If you want to look it up online, how do you play an A minor seven? You'll see a lot of graphics. Okay, same thing. Here's the B minor three chord. I just said about 20 seconds ago, every minor chord in a key is extended out as a minor seventh. Now, for the people who play the B minor like this, Believe it or not, you can strum from the A string. That's a B minor seven. What, what? All right. Now the four chord, the C chord. The four chord in any key can be played as a major seventh. And so the way you play C major seven is you just take your first finger off. All right. That's it. That's a, that's a C major seven. And we're going to talk about all the whys. Don't worry. And so far, and up until this moment, I've only talked about minor seventh and major seventh. Now the five chord, very, very important. The D chord, when you stack the way these things work inside of a key, the five chord becomes a dominant seventh chord. And what that means here, and we'll get to this in full detail, is that you're now adding, you have D chord and you're not putting, you're adding what's called a flat seventh, okay, on top of it. And the five chord becomes that dominant seventh chord. And then here's a sixth chord, and we can play it as a minor seventh, E minor seven. So now we kind of, hold up for one second, all you need to know at this point is that, okay, one chord can be played as major or major seventh, two as minor or minor seventh, three as minor or minor seventh, four as uh, major or major seventh, five as uh, major or dominant seventh, and we'll get to that in a second, and then six as a minor, a minor or minor seventh. And when you're writing a song, the key here is there's two reasons you would bring, well, mainly two reasons. You know, one of them can be the fact that you just hear it. But the idea is if you want to thicken up your stew, if you want more color. Now we have three notes in these original chords, majors and minors, three notes. By adding one note, we start to add like that new friend into the group. 
At first, everyone's like, hmm, okay. But there's a good synergy. All right, cool. And now there's four people. And now when you go around town, now all the energy is divided around four people, and it works. And so if you want to thicken up your stew, the term is that, and say you have a song that goes from G to C to E minor. What you want to know is you want to know, okay, what's the number sequence of that in my key? It's a one to a four to a six. All right, well, the one can be, excuse me, the one can be extended out to a major seven. Here's my G major seven. Really, or thunder. And then my four chord can be extended out to a major seventh, like that. And then my E minor can be extended out to a minor seventh. So the original chord progression of G, C, and E minor, sorry, can be extended out now to G major seven, C major seven, and E minor seven. time without screwing up eventually. So you can hear, you can hear that you thickened up the stew, right? Um, things sounded good, a little bit more complex, a little bit more color, and that's one reason you do it. Another reason that you would add a seventh chord is if you're writing a melody. If you write a song and it's G, C, and E minor, and either you or your vocalist starts to sing a note, and they sing this note here. And you're like, why are we singing that note? It's an F sharp, what is that? Oh, look, I can put in my chord extension and bond with the melody. So you might have a song that has the actual extension as a melody, like. Where, and though, what I just did right there is I highlighted those notes uh, to be part more part of the melody. And so, if you want to thicken your stew, if you want to write a melody, and the melody happens to have one of those extended chord tones in it, then you want to use your uh, seventh chords. Now, that's pretty much a big chunk of our lesson. Seventh chords go in a key, and there they are again. One is major or major seventh. Two is minor or minor seventh. Three is minor or minor seventh. Four is major or major seventh. Five is major or dominant seventh, and we'll talk about the dominant seventh very soon. And the um, sixth is minor or minor seventh. Now these are all interchangeable, okay? You don't have to like, once you play a G, and if you go to a C major seven, you don't have to keep the C major seven the entire time on the song. You can bounce before, like, you can bounce between them. You can do whatever you like with them, okay? You can always kind of move them around and have fun. So I do want to talk to you now about the dominant seventh chord, the one that's in that five position. Music theory alert. We're gonna really need to kind of hit some music theory here. And I'm gonna line it up for you. All right, a dominant seventh chord by itself. If we were just a you know, musical scientist and we came across a dominant seventh chord in the wild, and we said, ooh, this is a D dominant seventh, and we pick it up, and then as scientists do, we kill it, and then we dissect it. Uh, what we're gonna find is that it has the root note, it has a major third, it has a fifth, and it has what's called a flat seven, or a minor seventh on top of it, all right? It's not a standard major seventh, which is a one, three, five, and the major seventh, which means just the seventh note out of a major scale. And it's not a minor seventh, which is the one, the flat three of a minor scale, the five, and the flat seven of a minor scale. It's a mixture of these two. It's a major chord, one, three, five, with this flat seven on it, known as a minor seventh. So dominant seventh chords have a really cool ear kind of catching sound. Here's the D chord, and here is the D7. All right, they have a little bit of a nice, like, a special note. And so the dominant seventh chord itself really is where you want to start studying kind of like how this music theory thing works <laughs> right now. Um, again, a one, three, five, and a flat seven. And that is a very important chord to look at. Number one, you find it only in a key in the fifth position. Now you can write with uh, seventh chords, and we'll talk about that in, in, in a couple seconds, and 
We can talk about secondary dominance if you want to. But this dominant seventh chord usually, not always, is found in the five position of a key. So if you're within a key, if you're writing a song in the key of G, and you're using your major sevens, you know, when it comes time for the five chord and you want a really nice pull back to wherever you're going, you're going to use your dominant seven. When you want to go back to a one, or if you just want to feel movement. This dominant seventh really has a good, good magnetic pull, and it's caused by having a major chord with a minor seventh on top of it. Now there is a fourth type of chord we're just going to briefly talk about called a minor major seventh chord. Very, very rare chord. All right, and all I'm going to say is this: that chord, you really find it when um, think of uh, "Why My Guitar Gently Weeps" or um, something like "Dear Prudence," I believe, where you have this walking bass line. And that bass line itself is like a major chord, then a major, then as we move it down, the chord becomes a major seventh, and then as we move it down, it becomes a seventh, and then as we move it down, it becomes this minor seventh, um, minor major seventh chord. Very rare chord, look it up, but they're usually just in passing. I can make a whole another video about minor and <laughs> minor major seventh chords, but uh, the truth is that we don't find them a lot, and so this is about the chords we find. We have one more thing to talk about, and I hope, I really hope that this isn't the worst guitar video in the world. Um, the dominant seventh chord itself. Okay, so I'm here preaching that this five chord, this, this fifth chord in the key, is a dominant seventh, has a tremendous pull. But there is a rule, and this rule you find a lot, and it makes people's like head spin if you don't understand why. They think it's like a conspiracy theory that we just don't know about, but it's not, it's very simple. The idea is, is that Dominant seventh chords can be played anytime, any place you want, really, okay? And this is where the blues comes from. I mean, if you play a blues, you're playing, you know, seventh chords, G7, C7, D7. And the reason being is, number one, they always sound good. Seventh chords sound good, but that's like the conspiracy theory <laughs> version of it. Let's just talk about why it really works. In the key, in the beginning of, uh, the beginning of this video, I told you how... Um, each chord has its place in, in music. You have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And the 1, 4, and 5 chords are major chords, and the 2, 3, and 6 chords are minor chords. Well, here's this chord that's 3 quarters major and then 1 quarter minor. But that 1 quarter minor really puts like a good minor twist on it. You know, here's the D, here's the D7. And so the idea is you can play all the chords in a key as 7th chords, all right? G7. A7, B7, C7, and D7, and E7. Now, if you play it like that, it's not going to sound too good, but if you're writing a song, at any moment in time, you can, in fact, turn any chord you want to a seventh chord because if it's supposed to be a major chord, well, three quarters of it is a major chord. If it's supposed to be a minor chord, that minor seven is going to have such a good pull towards the minor sound. So you're going to find songs that have like G, A minor, maybe C7, instead of a C major seven or C7 like this. And the question is, you're going to be like, why did that C7 come in there? And the idea is, it's just because you can. Because this chord has its toes in the major and it also has a toe in the minor. And whichever chord you need, it's going to kind of bleed through. You know, if I have a song again, it starts, let's say it's, it's in G, right? I have G, and I have A7 instead of A minor, E7, G, A7, E7. If you're looking at the song, somebody's going to be like, what key is it in? And they're like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. And you have to realize, hey, Dominant seventh chords can be put in at any time. There are many songs I'm, I'm going to be doing an In the Mind of soon that have so many dominant seventh chords, your head will spin, but the idea is you get a certain sound. And so it's going to sound bluesy. It might, it might sound like um, New Orleans-ish uh, if you put seventh chords in. You know, like, here's, here's a song. You know, it's like C, E7, A7, D7. 
right? It has a blues sound to it, but all those chords can be played as seventh chords. And so I hope this helped. I hope it didn't make it too, too crazy. If you want to keep it easy, you follow the chord uh, formula of first chord major or major seventh, second chord minor or minor seventh, blah, 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 blah. That's where they belong. You can thicken the stew and add some color. If your melody has that note in it, use your seventh chords. And if you really want to start spicing things up, introduce, you know, write a chord progression in the key and start experimenting with just playing one of those chords as a, as a dominant seventh chord where it shouldn't be. And you might hear some things you like. I hope this was a good lesson. I hope that um, it helped. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you so much for being here. Go write some stuff with uh, seventh chords in it. Learn how to do this stuff. It's important so that you know your songs. That when you're watching or learning songs, you know where it comes from, and when you're writing songs, you know how to spice it up a little bit. Hope I did well. See you soon. Bye bye.